Jesus. <laughs> Bring the thunder shade. <laughs> All right, so just a quick little intro. Uh, I'm going to read the opening to a script. Uh, this is for a spec pilot. So a spec pilot is basically you write the first episode of a TV show, but not for the purposes of being made, just for the purposes of being hired to write other TV shows. So knowing that, I went insane uh, because <laughs> no one's going to make this, uh, and I wanted to stand out. And I sent it to my manager over the holiday, and in January she basically said, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> and we just sent it to Don Cheadle's production company. <laughs> so they're reading what I'm going to read to y'all here in a second. It's called Small Dick Energy. <laughs> So I'm going to read it. It's a script, so it's, it's structured a little different, but I'm going to try to read it uh, in a way that makes sense uh, out loud. So on black, uh, uh, pre-lap means like you hear the voice before you see anything. So this is pre-lap uh, dialogue. Welcome aboard the Gus bus for another trip through the news with me, Gus Tucker. Also, real quick, we bought a, a kid's jacket from Goodwill, and on the name tag it said Gus Tucker. So that's where that came from. <laughs> I just want to say to all my Gus Bus passengers out there, I know times are bleak. Cut to a still image of a massive asteroid hurtling toward Earth. And then, like a weatherman, Gus Tucker, 35, appears beside it. We're watching a stylized, graphics-heavy YouTube video. The whole thing has a dad joke vibe to it. Gus says, looks like they're giving us just about under a month before the big space rock of doom collides with this little blue planet of ours. And I know some of you are scared. He makes up for his balding head with a thick, bushy beard, wearing a Hawaiian shirt over his pot belly and cargo shorts as he uses a plastic toy lightsaber to point at the image. And who can blame you? I mean, look at this thing. We're talking extinction level event here, people. Cut to generic promotional footage of NASA playing silently as Gus's voice continues. We've lost hope after watching NASA's so-called missions fail again and again. Gus's face rises up from the bottom of the screen. NASA... More like, no, sir. <laughs> uh, as the video keeps playing, we pull out to reveal interior, suburban house, bedroom, late day. Uh, the video plays from a laptop on a small desk. Sitting in front of it is Eugene Bell, 35, Korean slash white. A bit husky, he gives off a World of Warcraft player vibe. <laughs> Not a ladies' man. Eugene says, what an asshole. Eugene minimizes the YouTube window, revealing another open window, a dating website called VCard. Their slogan reads, nobody should die a virgin. Eugene's profi profile is up, an awkward photo of him forcing a smile. He checks his notifications and messages, nothing. Eugene says, what am I even doing? He can still hear Gus's video, Gus's video audio in the background. Gus voiceover, chaos breaking out all over. Doomsday preppers stocking up their underground bunkers, but it's all pointless, people. Frustrated, Eugene sighs and brings up the YouTube window again. Scrolls down to the comment section, trying to decide which comment to leave, deleting one before typing the next. Comment, I hate you so very much. Delete. Comment, your videos make me root for the asteroid. Delete. Comment, Alicia deserves better. That comes in a play later. Which we won't get to. <laughs> Eugene stares at his last comment, points her hovering over the submit button, mentally weighing the pros and cons until, ding, the sound of a private message from the V-Card site. Shocked and excited, Eugene brings the V-Card window back up, sees that he's got a single private message waiting, clicks it. The message is from a girl named Beth. Her profile photo shows a pretty, nerdy girl with a sweet smile. Beth's message reads, Hi, Eugene, I'm Beth. I'd love to meet you. Eugene types his response, Me too. As soon as he sends it, he second guesses himself starts furiously typing another message. I didn't mean mean too in the I'm gonna me too you kind of way. <laughs> Before he has a chance to send the message, Beth's message comes up. How about tonight? This message is followed by an airdrop showing her address. Eugene grins, but we can see the panic in his eyes too. This is all very overwhelming. He erases his last message and types a new one. Can't wait. And then back to Gus's voiceover. Leaving it all behind and heading to the New Mexico desert for when Eugene hears this, he brings the YouTube window back up, looks at his Alicia comment again, deletes it just as Gus displays a colorful flyer that says, 
the apocalypse, a cock and lips orgy. A massive grin on his face. Gus says, the apocalypse, a cock and lips orgy. You can't be afraid when you're out getting laid. Eugene scoffs as he closes his laptop, disgusted by this guy. Cut to exterior, town, late day. Eugene walks through his small town with a pep in his step. Equal parts excitement and nerves. The streets are covered with broken glass, trash, and the leftover debris of looting. But Eugene ignores all this as he spots the luxury apartment building across the street. Checks the address on his phone. This is the place. As he takes a deep breath and crosses the street, we can just make out the shape of the asteroid in the sky. Interior, Beth's apartment later that night. Eugene and Beth sit across the table from each other, right in the middle of their home-cooked meal. The apartment is spotless, fully furnished. Elegant paintings rather than photos hang from the walls. Classical music plays softly from unseen speakers. Beth, not eating, studies Eugene as he nervously stuffs his face, taking bite after bite, a bit sloppy. Beth says, are you really a virgin, Eugene? A chunk of meat gets stuck in his throat when he hears this question has a violent coughing fit, slapping his chest as he tries to hide his panic. Beth just watches calmly, waiting for his response. Eugene takes a big drink of water, but coughs into the glass, spraying water across the table. I'm sorry, wrong pipe. Beth says, okay, I'll go first then. I am technically a virgin, Eugene says. When you say technically, Beth says, no man has entered me. Eugene is taken aback by Beth's calm demeanor. She speaks so openly, almost like artificial intelligence. Eugene says, okay, um, Beth suddenly cackles, startling Eugene. You're going to scare away another one, Beth, you goof. Eugene, uncomfortable, searches the apartment for a way to change the subject, spots a duffel bag on the floor nearby. Planning a trip somewhere? Beth stands, walks toward Eugene in a shy yet sexy way, sits in the chair right beside him, scoots closer. Eugene tries not to show his growing panic. Beth says, New Mexico, heading to the desert there. I leave tomorrow, so Eugene says, New Mexico desert? You're not going to that, what's it called, a cock? And she shuts him up by pulling his hand into her lap, tracing the lines of his palm with her French-tipped fingernail. Beth says, it's a special thing to give our virginities to each other, don't you think? They look into each other's eyes at that moment. Eugene is locked in, can feel their connection, the spark. Her eyes, the way she bites her bottom lip, are intoxicating, until, Beth says, I mean, over the years, I've sucked I don't know how many dicks, like a thousand dicks. But you and me will have, I'm sorry, I thought, did you say a thousand? No, of that. <laughs> she pulls his hand to her groin, presses it there. This is untouched and all yours. Eugene tries to pull his hand free from her grip, but she squeezes harder, easily overpowering him. Eugene says, listen, Beth, maybe this is, Beth says, tried anal once, but the cock on this guy. It was like Jim Henson's arm, and I was a screaming Miss Piggy. Still hurts to sit at certain angles. Eugene finally yanks his hand free, jumps to his feet and backs away from her, wanting nothing more than to escape. Eugene says, I'm sorry, but I've got work in the morning, and I think it's best if I just... Eugene trips over the duffel bag, spills its contents before crashing to the floor. A leather gimp mask, a flyer for the orgy, and a gigantic, realistic purple dildo. Beth dives on top of him, smashes her mouth into his, shoving her tongue down his throat as she straddles him. Eugene is pinned to the floor, his arms and hands moving awkwardly, not sure what to do with him. I just want to remind you, Don Cheadle's reading this. <laughs> she pulls her mouth away with a wet pop, grinds against Eugene, grinning down at him mischievously. Beth says, you really are a virgin virgin, aren't you? Like a toy that's never been taken out of its package until now. She lunges her face forward like a striking cobra. Snaps her teeth shut like a bear trap an inch from Eugene's nose. Eugene says, you deserve a better toy than me. Like an action figure with articulation and kung fu grip. I'm more like, like silly putty. Whack, Beth slaps him across the face, then follows it with an immediate kiss to his lips. Beth says, don't worry, Eugene the clean. She leans back almost horizontally and then lifts herself back up like Nosferatu rising from his coffin, holding the purple dildo with both hands. I'll dirty you up. Eugene says, please let me go, Al. Beth swings the dildo like a baseball bat, knocking Eugene out. <laughs> Dissolve to. <laughs> Interior, random residential bathroom. Flashback. Oh, I forgot about the flashback. The flashback is broken into small key moments. A steaming bath full of water and foamy bubbles. One little boy, six, is already in, happily splashing in the tub. 
Another young boy, eight, steps into the, into the tub, and in parentheses I say, nothing weird here, just a couple of brothers taking a bath together. <laughs> the six-year-old points toward the eight-year-old's lap, laughing as the eight-year-old frowns, embarrassed, pulls his knees to his chest to hide his nakedness. More and more steam fills the air as the bath seems to grow hotter. The six-year-old's smile melts into a grimace as the water begins to boil. He screams. Back to Beth's apartment bedroom. Eugene wakes up lying in an unfamiliar bed, and then he realizes that the dildo has been shoved horizontally into his mouth, his teeth biting into it, duct taped in place. His wrists have been handcuffed to the bed frame, and he's stripped down to his underwear. Just as he starts to panic, kicking his legs and mumbling through the enormous phallus, Beth from off screen says, you're awake. Eugene watches with wide eyes as Beth slides into the room, now wearing the leather git mask and nothing else. Her torso is covered with tattoos, spiderweb patterns across her breasts, both nipples pierced, a red black widow hourglass just above her pubis. Beth says, and I was just starting to lose my patience. She hums playfully as she creeps toward the bed. Eugene's eyes widen as he tries to beg through the dildo. She runs her fingernails across Eugene's legs, starting his ankles up to his knees, his thighs, reaches for his underwear. Eugene thrashes more violently, tries to kick out at Beth, but she catches his foot, purrs seductively as she pops his big toe into her mouth, starts sucking it, moaning. Don't you? Disgusted, <laughs> Eugene kicks out again, slams his heel into her face. She stumbles back, mouth bloody from her busted lip, but she only smiles, teeth stained red. She lunges for Eugene's underwear, grips the waist strap, ignores his panic as she starts to pull them down. Beth says, let's open up that package and test that articulation. Eugene shuts his eyes and turns his face away as Beth finally rips his underwear off, lets the shredded fabric fall from her hand as she stares down at his groin. A moment of silence as she takes it in, expressionless. Eugene opens his eyes just enough to get a peek. Beth says, oh, Eugene, you poor, poor thing. She seems to pity him at first, but as she keeps staring at his tiny penis, she can't help but smirk and snicker a bit. It's like a micro machine, a little brown minivan. <laughs> But Eugene doesn't seem to notice when Beth starts to laugh because his eyes start to droop. A strange calmness falls over him as if he's left his body. Beth's laugh trails off when she hears it, like a machine powering up. She realizes the sound is coming from Eugene's body, focused at his groin. Confused and curious, Beth leans in closer, just as a blue light begins to glow from under Eugene's skin, as if his blood was turning into liquid lightning. As she watches this happen, the light gets brighter, concentrating in his groin, the root of all his shame, building in brightness and power as each second ticks by. Beth glances at Eugene, but he's in another universe. Looks like he's possessed, eyes rolled back. We stay on Beth's face so we can see the intensifying blue light reflecting on her skin. You can still hear the noise growing louder and louder until, cut to, the exterior of Beth's apartment building. A massive energy blast erupts from the top of the building, burning straight through the stone and metal, raining rubble down on the streets below and headed straight for the asteroid in the night sky. Cut to the title sequence, Small Dick Energy. <laughs>